advisor for advanced academics and specialty programs here in um, Prince William County Schools. And so she will be doing your presentation today. Kelly Brown, George. Good morning and thank you. Um, before we begin, Ms. Huff, if you're on there, our Chinese interpreter is not in the interpretation room. Um, I and just I reset am... him. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, I am not skilled enough to fix that one. Yes, yeah, I was morning. working on it, but I wanted to make sure I started the recording. <laughs> Thank you for that. I do appreciate it. Um, okay. So good morning and welcome. 各位早,欢迎你们的参与。There we go. Um, good morning and welcome. My name is Kelly Brown. I am the admin coordinator. For, I'm sorry, Kelly no, Brown. I am the supervisor for advanced academics and specialty programs. On our website, or, sorry, on the screen, you can see our email address as well as our website, wcs.edu. Um, on that website, you will find much of the information I am about to share with you today. Uh, I, I, apologize. I apologize. I'm going to turn the globe off just a minute because he's showing up on my side, but he's not going. Okay. Just give me two seconds. We don't know the problem of the Chinese language. We will try to solve the problem. Okay, everybody should be able to click on the globe now and go back to their room. All right, Everyone, like you make sure you click on the, the globe to make sure you go into your interpretation. Thank you. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start that over again to make sure everybody gets the same information. Um, we're here this morning to talk about our elementary school specialty programs that exist in Prince William County. My name is Kelly Brown. I am the supervisor of advanced academics and specialty programs. Our office supports all of the specialty programs K through 12 in Prince William. Um, our email address is aasp at pwcs.edu. We do encourage families to use that general inbox so that um, Dr. Laura Evans, our admin coordinator, and I can both respond to your messages as quickly as possible. This allows both of us access to those questions, and whoever is available to answer those questions first can do so. Um, in addition, we have our website, pwcs.edu slash specialty programs. This is where we have much of the information that we're about to share with you today. Our objectives for this morning are to make sure that all of our participants understand the specialty programs in Prince William County. We want to make sure you have the opportunity to explore what specialty programs exist at the elementary level. And we wanna make sure that participants understand the process for applying to specialty programs as well as deadlines and supports that we have for families. What are specialty programs? These programs are Prince William County programs that focus on career exploration, subject area concentration, and college and university preparation, okay? That's for our K through 12 programs. Please realize that our elementary programs, we do know that our students may not be looking at college and career readiness, but we are looking at that exploration of subject areas, exploration of different um, careers that students may pursue later, okay? It really is that subject area concentration in elementary school. Um, all of our elementary school specialty programs are interest-based programs, okay? Um, students would participate in one program at a time. Uh, they cannot participate in multiple specialty programs at the elementary level. 
And they would also attend the school that hosts the, hosts the specialty program. Um, and we'll discuss what that would look like for our students to attend those schools full time. So as families are considering specialty programs at elementary schools, we want you to know this is a should I apply, not a I must apply, okay? Our specialty programs are an opportunity for our students. They are not a requirement, okay? Students do not have to attend a specialty program. They can attend their base elementary school and receive a wonderful comprehensive elementary education at any school in Prince William County. Okay, so the first step that families are gonna look at is create an interest list. What are some of those areas that your students are just naturally interested in outside of adult direction, okay? Once you've done that, you're gonna look at your neighborhood school. What does the school that's zoned for your home have to offer your students, okay? Many of our schools have amazing programs within their schools. So we want you to make sure you look at your neighborhood school first. Then we want you to look at other available programs and locations, okay? We want you to look at where the program is housed. We want you to look at how your student would get to and from that program each day. We want you to look at what that program has to offer your student, okay? That maybe your neighborhood school doesn't have, or maybe your neighborhood school already has that, okay? Once you've had the opportunity to gather that research, then you're going to look back at that student interest list and you're gonna see how those programs match up with your student's interest, okay? So we're gonna talk about that research today. We're gonna talk about program locations, transportation, and then the specific programs that exist in Prince William. Program locations. So we have multiple locations for each of our elementary programs. This makes it more accessible for our students. So you're not traveling from one side of the county all the way to the other side of the county to access a program, okay? So each program is gonna have multiple locations and students are pre-assigned to locations. This helps families understand where their student would be going to school. So I have an example for you on the screen. I'm a student who is zoned for Occoquan Elementary and I'm interested in the International Baccalaureate Primary Years Program, IBPYP. Question is, where do I go? And you're gonna look, this information is on our website, I'll show you how to access it. But for the moment, take a look at the screen. I have three of our program locations, Antietam Elementary, Buckland Mills Elementary, and Ellis Elementary. And I want you to look at those options and see where would a student from Occoquan Elementary go? Okay. Those of you that answered Antietam, you are 100% right. Okay, you would look at those schools that are listed under each program location. Okay. The next thing to think about is how are you getting your student from Occoquan Elementary's neighborhoods over to Antietam Elementary, okay? We offer two types of bus service in Prince William. We offer traditional bus service where the stops are within the neighborhood school boundaries and provide access to that neighborhood school, okay? This is the bus transportation we're most used to, where the bus stop is maybe at the end of the street, a couple of streets over. It is very proximally close to a student's home. Okay. The other option we have is express bus services. Okay. These are stops outside of the neighborhood school boundary that allow students to access that school as a specialty program. Okay. These schools are usually, or I'm sorry, these stops are hubs. So they're often neighborhood elementary schools. We have some at middle schools, some at local parks. There's a variety of different express bus service stops. And we want families to look at where is that stop and how can you get your students to and from that stop each day, okay? So I'll show you on our website exactly where to find that information, but just make sure you're thinking that in the back of your mind, okay? 
I'm going to give you an example of some students in their different types of transportation. On the left-hand side of your screen, you have two students who are zoned for Antietam Elementary. Okay, They're zoned for Antietam. They're attending Antietam. These students in blue are accessing our traditional bus services. Okay, Student A goes a total distance of 400 feet from their home to get to their bus stop. Okay, Very proximally close for that student. Student B, they're a walker because of how close they are to their school. They're going 0.8 miles. Okay, Maybe a little bit long for those kindergarten legs, but it's still very close for their school. Okay, The students on the right-hand side of your screen they're zoned for, for, sorry, they are zoned for Mary Williams Elementary, okay? And they're attending Antietam for the PYP program. These students are both accessing our specialty program express bus stops. So they are going not to a neighborhood bus stop, but they are going to a hub bus stop, okay? Student A, Closest bus stop to that family is at Mary Williams Elementary. For that student, it's 1.4 miles away. As a mom of elementary school students, I'd have to think twice before I asked my third grader to walk that far. You have to look at what the roads are that they're crossing, things to that effect. Then you have student D, also accessing the specialty program bus stop, but they're only 0.3 miles from their hub, which is at Mary Williams Elementary, okay? So you wanna look at your specific areas. I will show you later on this morning on the website exactly how to figure out which bus stop your student would access, okay? We have that information all listed and we ask that parents select their bus stop in the application process so that we know you're considering that for the future. So we've talked about where the programs are located. We've talked about the transportation for those programs. Now we're gonna talk about what those programs are. Okay. We have three specialty programs at the elementary school level. The first program is the International Baccalaureate Primary Years Program. This is often referred to as the IBPYP. We have traditional schools, and then we have world language programs. We're gonna talk very briefly about each one of these, and then I'll talk to you about where you can get more specific information. So the International Baccalaureate Primary Years Program, IBPYP, uses the Prince William County curriculum within an IB framework. So students are gonna cover the same state standards, the same Prince William County expectations, but they're gonna look at things through a slightly different lens, okay? Students will be exploring six global transdisciplinary themes, okay? When we talk about transdisciplinary, we're asking students to look not at English as a separate subject or language arts as a separate subject, we're asking them to look at language arts and science and social studies combine together and talk about how those different content areas interact with one another, okay? We wanna make sure we're focused with our IBPYP schools on how what students are learning in their classrooms in Prince William, how that's relevant and impacting all over our globe. So they really will have a global perspective. Along with that global perspective, all of our IBPYP schools have a world language component, okay? So all of our schools have a component where students are exposed to a world language at a young age. The, the IB framework does have the students at the center, and it focuses on student inquiry, where students are asking the questions and are actively engaged in the learning. We have five PYP schools in Prince William, Antietam, Buckland Mills, Ellis, Mullen, and Rosa Parks. Do not rush to write down all of the different things on there. 
We just want to give you an opportunity so you can see quickly what those five schools are, where their feeder patterns are. We will show you how to access this information online. Okay. In addition, what I want to do is highlight for families that there are these specific feeder patterns. And if you want to learn more about IBPYP, I'm asking that families attend the information sessions at those schools. So if you are a student who is zoned for Occoquan and you're interested in the program at Antietam, I want you to go to the information session at Antietam. I want you to have an opportunity to see the school, to interact with the teachers and the coordinators and learn about what IBPYP looks like in their school. I'm gonna ask you to do the same for the traditional programs as well as for the world language programs to make sure that you're getting a true understanding of how it looks at those schools. So that's our IBPYP. We'll move on to, oh, let's try that again. We're gonna move on to our traditional schools. We have two traditional schools in Prince William, Pennington and Porter. Both schools are grades one through eight. Okay, they, as the PYP schools, they use the Prince William curriculum. They're gonna have the same Virginia standards as well as Prince William expectations. Okay, students at both of these traditional schools are required to wear uniforms each day. And both schools have a requirement that students and parents are active members of the community. There are volunteer or community service requirements at both of these schools, okay? Again, we encourage you to go to those schools to learn more about what exactly it looks like on a day-to-day -day basis for our traditional schools. Students who, are attend who live west of Hoadley Road will attend Pennington Elementary, I'm sorry, Pennington Traditional School, and students who live east of Hoadley Road would be eligible for Porter Traditional School, okay? These schools are also unique in that they do not have students who are automatically zoned for them, okay? All of their students are applicants through the specialty program application process. At the, for first grade, they welcome a whole new first grade class. As students move up in their grade levels, space becomes available as students choose to continue choose choose to not continue in the program okay so there is limited availability for second through eighth grade we just want families to be aware of that through the, the process the third program that we have is our world language programs these are considered one-way immersion programs we are not looking to have students leave in fifth grade as fully fluent in a language, okay? They are really focused on exposing students to a world language at a young age, okay? Students will have the opportunity to study that world language in grades one through five. It is typically done through the encore rotation, okay? So it, it's not a situation where students will have that world language every single day, Okay, it may be every sixth day or every fifth day, depending on the school's rotations. Okay, and the languages are available based on the school. So we do have some elementary programs with French and some with Spanish. Because they are not intended for students to become fully fluent in the language, they're more of a discovery or an exposure program. Students may not pick based on the language which school they want to attend, okay? So we have five programs in Prince William. Three of them are Spanish, Enterprise Elementary, River Oaks, and Tyler. And the other two are French at Lake Ridge Elementary and at Signal Hill Elementary, okay? So as I said a moment ago, we don't allow students to pick their program based on the language offered. So if a student at Patty Elementary is interested in the world language program, that student would be attending the program at River Oaks. Even if they preferred French, they would be zoned for the River Oaks location that offers Spanish. 
So those are our three programs, okay? The next part is the application process, okay? We've asked you to research programs. You're attending information. We used to call them information nights. They're really information sessions. Um, the application opened on November 1st and will remain open until February 1st. The application is an interest-based application. Okay, we're looking for students that are interested in the program. There is not an advantage if you put your application in on November 1st, other than you don't have to worry about wondering, did I remember to put in the application? It's off of your to-do list. Okay, it is, they're not first come first serve programs. Okay, we do have limited seats in some of those programs. With that in mind, what happens is we look at all of our student applicants. We make sure that students are the correct age, okay, so that they have they are entering first grade. We make sure that they've selected the correct zone school, okay, and then we put all of those students into a lottery. So if I have 30 seats available for Tyler's World Language Program and I have 35 applicants, what will happen is those 35 names will go into a lottery, we'll draw 30 seats, and we'll offer seats to those 30 students whose names were drawn, okay? We recognize that that is a challenge because we have students we know are interested, okay? But unfortunately, because of capacity issues, we can't guarantee that every student will be able to participate. We do allow students to apply for up to three programs. So at elementary school, you could apply for all three programs if you wanted to. You are required to rank them as first, second, and third choice programs. We do our best to offer a student's first choice program. If they put Tyler as their first choice program and we did not draw their name, we would look at, do they have a second choice program? If they have a second choice program, we look to see if they can be placed in their second choice program. If there is space available in that program, wonderful, we offer them a seat for that. If there is not space available in that second program, then we would look to their third choice program if they submitted one, okay? There's not a disadvantage to submitting first, second, and third choice. There's not really an advantage to only submitting a first choice. It's entirely up to each family of how you want to approach it, okay? Decisions regarding your application status will come out in mid to late February. Um, we will send emails from the division to all families that did apply, letting them know that the application status has been updated. You'll log into the application portal. You'll see the decision. And if you are offered a seat, you have until March 5th to either accept that seat or decline that seat. Okay. As I said, there's really three, three options as far as your acceptance results. Either one, you are offered a seat, okay? Students will be offered a seat in only one program, okay? We, we do our best to offer it in their highest choice that has space available. Those seats must be accepted by March 5th so that we can then communicate with schools. They can start the scheduling process. We can communicate with transportation, excuse me, and we can make sure that everything is set to go for those programs. If a student, if there is not space available in any of the students' programs, which is a very rare circumstance, but it does happen, then it would say that the student was not accepted or not offered any seats, okay? That student would attend his or her base school. They would not attend the specialty program school. And then the third option is truly only for our um, traditional schools. Because those schools do not have a base population, we do keep a wait list for those schools. So if a student lists Pennington as their first choice and Pennington does not have any seats available, if that student's name is not drawn in the lottery, then that student would be waitlisted for Pennington we would still look at that student's second or third choice programs and potentially offer them a seat. If a student is on a wait list and receives an offer for a seat, 
they can accept that offered seat and it will not impact their wait list status. Okay, they'll still be left on the wait list. If a space becomes available, they may be offered that seat. Okay, accepting a, a different program when you are waitlisted does not impact your wait list status. All right. So now that we've gone over the programs that we have available, I want to take a moment and share with you what the website looks like and what the application looks like. So I'm going to stop sharing for just a moment and I'm going to pull up our website. Okay. Easiest way to access our website is to go to www.pwcs.edu slash specialty programs. Okay, this takes you immediately to our website. Just to give you a quick orientation of our website, on the left-hand side, you'll see the different programs. Elementary is right at the top. We have our middle school, traditional schools, high school, the application process, transportation, and VHSL eligibility. Okay. We do have application help sessions um, on those dates listed, making sure that families have access to support for the application process. These help sessions are really a Q&A or an office hours type setting. Families come with their questions, we answer the questions, and then families would move on with the rest of their day. There is no presentation to the application help sessions. It's really designed as a troubleshooting mechanism. Okay? Those are all held on Zoom and you can access that right on our website. You do not have to register in advance. Also on our website, you have all of our contact information. Okay? If you do have any questions or come across anything that you need help with, please feel free to reach out to us. So if I go down and I select our elementary school programs, you have our information sessions. Today's information session is posted there. We will have a recording of today's information session posted to our website, hopefully by the end of next week. Okay, it does take us a little bit of time because we have to put in the closed captioning for everyone. Then you have our three programs. Okay, and I'm gonna look at our world language programs this morning. So just click on that and you're able to see some information about those programs, okay? They are transfer programs, which means if you're that student at Occoquan Elementary who decides that you want to apply for a world language program, you would go full time to the elementary school that you would be assigned. So if we go down here and I said an Occoquan Elementary student, they would be zoned for Lake Ridge Elementary. Okay, so they would attend Lake Ridge Elementary full time. The contact information for all the coordinators is listed there, the dates and times of their information sessions, and then their attendance areas are also listed there. Okay, um, then we have our Spanish language programs as well. So that's where you're gonna find information about your program location, okay? If you're looking for information about transportation, you're gonna go back to that main elementary school page and click on transportation information. That will take you to our specialty program transformation, transportation page. You'll click on, oh, excuse me. You'll click on elementary schools and you'll be able to see, okay, I said that my student was from Occoquan Elementary they would be attending a program at Lake Ridge Elementary. I'm going to scroll down to Lake Ridge Elementary. And I'm going to look at the bus stops that are available for Lake Ridge Elementary. And I'm going to decide which bus stop best fits my family's needs. Okay. The last thing you're going to do, you've looked at your program location, you've looked at your um, transportation. We're gonna go back to that specialty programs page and we're gonna click on the application process. 
It walks you through, if you scroll down, it walks you through all the different steps. It reminds you of your deadline of February 1st. You're gonna click apply here. And I'm gonna very quickly walk you through the application process from start to begin, start, start to beginning, start to end to make sure that you see what information you're entering, okay? This is an external application. It is not done through Parent View. You're gonna scroll down. If you don't have an account, you'll wanna create one. If you already have an account from last year, whether it was for the student you're currently applying for or another student, you'll log back into that account. Okay. Oh, goodness gracious. Log back into the account and it's gonna take you to your dashboard. Okay. If you have a student from last year, it will ask you to update that student's information. Please make sure you update it, even if you're not applying for that student to go to a specialty program, it just makes the system work better. Um, you'll see your students listed over here on the left-hand side. If you have not added any students, you'll need to make sure you associate one. Okay, I'm gonna show you my daughter, Emma. You can go in, make sure her information is accurate. It's all her demographic information. And I'm gonna go here to grade level and I'm gonna make it so her grade level is first grade and she is going to Occoquan Elementary, okay? That is her zone school of attendance. If you do not know your student's zone school of attendance, please click up here. That will take you to the, um, to the Find My School app through Prince William, you'll enter your address and it will tell you what your zoned school of attendance is. So I'm gonna update Emma's information and it's gonna take me back to my dashboard. I'm gonna submit her application. Click the green button. It'll show all of your children. Who do you wanna apply for? Today we're here for Emma. And then it shows you what programs Emma's eligible to apply for. She's going to do the world language program. And it's going to say, okay, this is for first through fifth grade. We're going to make sure that's what we have. And click select. And it's going to tell me she's zoned for the Lake Ridge program. Click on Lake Ridge. Click select. There's some extra clicks in there. And then you're going to complete the new application. It's going, to add, it's going to take the information you had already entered and ask you to confirm that. This is all her information. Okay, You'll enter some more demographic information. Okay, Her address is the same. Her email address, because she's in first grade, I'm going to go ahead and use my own email address because she's not going to be checking that email. Okay, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to put my relationship to my daughter. This information comes in, most of this information comes in directly from your account. I'm going to click Virginia. Um, and then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to say, is this her first choice, her second choice, or her third choice? For Emma, it's her first and only choice. Okay. We looked at the various bus stops, and for my family, it was really, even though we're Occoquan Elementary, on my way to work, I pass Penn Elementary. I can select Penn Elementary as her bus stop, okay? Does she have any accommodations that need to be shared to help her access the application process? If yes, you're gonna cl click yes and list the accommodations. If no, you just click no and continue on with the application. This is really asking about what accommodations, this documented accommodations the student may have that they need to access the application process. For our elementary schools, what I'm doing with you right now is the application process, okay? I'm going to acknowledge that yes, my student needs to meet those program requirements in order to stay at their, their specialty program school. And then we enter the student's initials. 
Okay. Failure to meet the program requirements may result in her returning to her base school and may impact athletic eligibility. This is for your high school students. You're just going to click that, yes, you understand if you don't meet the program requirements, you may return to your base school. Again, we'll enter Emma's initials. We're gonna confirm that we really want the world language program in French. I'm going to certify that yes, this information is accurate. Okay, I have not falsified any information. I'll enter my initials as her guardian. And I'm gonna click submit. It's gonna ask me to prove that I'm human and I am completely done with the process, okay? That is it. I can go back to, I'll see my order number and everything right there. I can go back to my dashboard and I'm gonna scroll down. You can see that I use my kids a lot for practice on this. And you can see Emma's application, the date that it was submitted, all of that is there. If I want to withdraw her application because we've changed our minds as family, we can go ahead and withdraw that application. Okay, you would submit a separate application for every program that your student's interested in for those first choice, second choice, and third choice. Okay, if you want to make sure that you have the information, you'll notice there's not an option for you to go back and see your application. So you'll want to make sure if you want that information for your records to print a copy of it before you hit the submit button. Okay. That is our application. You're done. You're finished. All of that explanation, it took under five minutes. Okay. This is not a lengthy application for our students or our families. Okay. This is the information that I have to share with you guys this morning. Um, I do want to thank you for taking the time to join us. I can see that there's a couple of questions in the um, Q&A, and so I will take a moment to answer those. But I wanted to make sure that our contact information is up there for you, our email address, our website, and our phone number. So let me peek at these questions. Um... So let's see. Okay. I'm zoned for Ellis and I attended there. Okay. So it is not true that so all of our all of our schools, elementary, middle, and high school, have specialty programs. So students do have the opportunity to apply for specialty programs, but they don't have the opportunity to just pick any of the 13 high schools. Okay. And that goes for elementary schools. So those students have to go to the, the specialty programs that they are zoned for, okay? So if you are zoned for the LSPYP program, you would have to attend the LSPYP program, okay? It's not, it's not up to families to decide which of those program locations they would prefer. Um, Application status for traditional schools, as well as all of our other specialty programs are done through the portal. We will send out email communications. You want to make sure beginning mid-February that you're checking your email regularly to make sure you get that notification. Okay. The lottery process is done through the computer system. Um, it's not, we, we no longer do a televised lottery system. It is simply randomized through the computer system. Um, you're always welcome to reach out to us if you have questions about the lottery system, but it is truly a randomized lottery system, okay? For a student who is currently in kindergarten, yes, they can apply for a specialty program to attend next school year, okay? They will not be able to attend for this school year. They would apply to it for next school year, okay? And then the last question that I can see in here is, do I apply for my specialty program first or do I apply for my zoned school first? You will wanna make sure that you're registered 
for your school, which whatever school it is that you're scheduled to attend, and then you can apply for your specialty programs. Okay. Um, I know there are a few questions here and there that will come up. We will answer those. We'll reach out to families if we're unable to answer them today. Um, if you have specific questions about a school's program, I encourage you to reach out directly to that school so that you're able to hear from the families or from the, sorry, not from the families, from the staff and the students there what their program looks like on a daily basis. Ms. Boyd, back over to you. Thank you so much, Ms. Brown, for um, coming on our family engagement series and just providing this great information to our elementary school parents. And thank you all for joining us today. Um, Ms. Uh, Brown has provided the presentation and this presentation was also recorded. So we will follow up with you with the recording as well as the presentation to have as a resource. We have also put in the chat a survey link that we would like for you to fill out. Um, it just takes a couple of minutes and this is just uh, to get some feedback from you as to how the session was and also for future programming, things that you might be interested in uh, for the family engagement series to provide more programming on. So again, uh, thank you to Ms. Brown. Thank you all for joining us and have a wonderful rest of your day.